Hey everyone, it's John, and today what I want to do is begin a little bit of a mini-series on switching. Uh, so this series is going to be kind of loosely based on the CCMP or the current CCMP switch exam. So that means we're going to be covering topics like uplink fast, backbone fast, root guard, loop guard, dynamic ARP inspection, that type of stuff. And the focus of this video is going to be on uplink fast. So just briefly, what actually is uplink fast? Well, a key point to remember is uplink fast deals with direct failures. That means if a switch is configured for uplink fast, it's going to have effect when a directly connected interface goes down, uplink fast will kick in. So in the case of switch three here, it's got two connections up one this this one here and this one here. Okay. Now if one of these directly connected ones go down, uplink fast will kick in, whereas from Switch 3's point of view, if this link up here goes down, uplink fast has no effect because that's indirect, it's not directly connected. So that's the first thing you have to realise. And the second thing is, well, do you know what? I think what I'll do is just quickly describe the topology because I think it'll make it easier to understand. So just straight away, what I've got here is um, I've manually configured Switch 1 here to be the root bridge. Um, and... That means, of course, by default, is that all of its links are in designated mode, which means they're all forwarding. So this is forwarding traffic, this is forwarding traffic, this is forwarding, and this is forwarding. Now, naturally, of course, every other switch, which means this, 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 and this, all need to find a path to the root bridge. And that path, the quickest path, will be through a root port. Now, all links are the same speed, so it's quite simply an... Um, a hop count calculation here obviously in the case of switch 2 it's going to be gigabit 00, zero going across here will be the root port in the case of switch 3 it's going to be gigabit zero, 01 will be the root port uh, switch 4 will be gigabit zero, 02 will be the root port and switch 5 gigabit zero, 03 will be the root port all to get to this root bridge here okay now the next thing is we're going to have some designated ports and some blocked ports now the way it's transpired is that um, switch 2, apart from the root port here, the rest of Switch 2's ports are all forwarding. They're all um, designated ports. So, effectively, all the ports on Switch uh, Switch 2 are forwarding. We've got the root port forwarding here, and we've got these designated ports also forwarding, okay? Which means that, by deduction, in the case of Switch 3, this is forwarding, which means that uh, gigabit zero 02 is now blocking. Switch 4 is forwarding, which means gigabit zero 01 is blocking. And switch 5, gigabit zero 03 is forwarding, so gigabit 10 is also blocking. Okay, so let's just home in on switch 4 just now, right here. Okay, so switch 4 is this one here. And like I say, this link is blocking. Now, what would happen? In the case of an uplink failure, i.e. its connection uplink to the root bridge, what would happen if this link just completely failed? Well, in the case of normal span entry, which is one thing which I should say is that when you're dealing with uplink fast and backbone fast, these are ordinary span entry features. They don't count in rapid span entry. Rapid span entry has got its own mechanism to deal with this, and it deals with it better actually. We'll get to that in another video though. So effectively, in normal span entry, what's going to happen is once this link here goes down, before this one here, the previously blocked link, before this link here can start going forward and to allow traffic to transit up this way, span entry is going to go through a listening stage, which is going to take 15 seconds, and then a learning stage, which is going to take another 15 seconds, which gives you a total of 30 seconds of outage before this link will go forward in, which means that for all the users connected down here, okay, this could be a wee office here, but all PCs and whatnot, they have no access because this link is blocked and this link is still blocked for 30 seconds. So what Uplink Fast has done effectively, Uplink Fast basically tracks um, it's uplinks, okay, so it's still receiving BPDUs, and I'll get to that in a minute. When this link fails, 
it's going to immediately bypass the listening and learning phase of its previously blocked link and shoot it straight into forwarding. So effectively, rather than waiting 30 seconds, we get an uplink faster time of immediate, basically it goes from 30 seconds to just immediately transition to forwarding. So how does it actually do this, okay? Now the first thing which I want to kind of impress upon you is that some people don't realise and they really should is that in the case of spanning tree, block links still receive BPDUs. And I'll show you that just briefly just now actually. So um people seem to think that because the link is blocking, it's like a like it's uh the same as a shutdown port. It's not, it's still actively listening. It can still hear the BPDUs and it uses that to map the topology. So if I do a do you know what I'll do actually? I'll type uh I'll clear do you know what I'll fit? We'll do a show span and tree first, just to show you. Okay, clearly, gig zero one on switch four is blocked. Okay, so gigabit zero one, which is this link here, this is the blocked link. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the span and tree counters just now, just so we get an updated version. And I'm also going to do a show span and tree VLAN one interface gigabit. 0, 1, that's the block link, detail, I'm going to include the BPDU information. This is current, remember, because I've just cleared the counters, and you'll see that we're still receiving BPDUs, and if I update that again, we've now got more. So we're still receiving BPDUs, and like I say, this is on gigabit zero one, 1, which if I do show spanning tree block ports, gigabit zero one 1 is absolutely blocked, but it's still receiving BPDUs. So what it does effectively is that for those, um, well, do you know what? The other, this is the other key point actually. Before I get to the the what this actually means is that once and try and remember this because a lot of people get this wrong is that once spanning tree has converged, the only switch which is actually transmitting BPDUs is the root bridge. People seem to think that all the switches are constantly sending BPDUs. No, see when spanning tree has um is completely synchronized, the only one transmitting BPDUs is the root bridge, and I'll show you that as well. So let's say let's have a look at a designated port. So of course, um like I say show spanning tree. Our designated port or forwarding root port is gigabit zero two, okay? So I'll do a clear spanning tree counters again. And if I do a show a uh, spanning tree VLAN 1 interface gigabit 0 2 this is the forwarding one okay in detail we're going to see that it's not saying any it's just receiving even though it's forwarding it's design it's root port sorry and it's still that will just stay the same so it's not going to send any the only one which is sending is switch um one now Here's the thing though, if we go to switch 2, we're going to see that it is actually sending BPDUs, which kind of sounds like it's contradicting, but it's not sending its own BPDUs. All that's happening is the BPDUs from the root bridge are being relayed through it. So if I do, say, show, if I do a clear, spanning tree, and counters a game, and I do a show, spanning tree vlan one and just pick gigabit zero two okay gig zero in fact you know what let's pick a uh, gigabit zero one because that's going to be connecting to this switch here which is the one we're talking about so do this link here gigabit zero one detail up and gig zero one detail we're still sending these bpdus okay but that is only because it's going through a root port here and a designated port now you notice that can't happen this one because we've got a blocked one and just a, a root port. But because this one's got, basically it's got, it can fully transit right through because these are all forwarding. It's still forwarding the BPDUs originated from the root bridge. So what is the implication here? What am I trying to say? Effectively what Uplink Fast does is that in the case of, if I just go back to the drawing, this is a block port, okay? Now if this port is still receiving the BPDUs, it's known that 
this is effectively an uplink path because it's receiving BPDUs on a path to the root bridge, okay? So it's not just a connection just to here or some random connection. It's an uplink path. It's calculating that, okay? So what it does is uplink fast effectively creates a group, okay? And it's grouped these two together in this case. It's got its forward and one to the root bridge and it's like a kind of backup path, okay? And it knows uplink fast effectively says that in the event that one of my group members goes down, i.e. this one, immediately transit this one into forwarding state. Do not wait 30 seconds. That's what uplink fast is going to do, okay? Now let me just show you the practical application. So quickly what we'll do is I will shut down gigabit uh, zero 01. And this does not have uplink fast configured yet, okay? So if I do, uh, well, I'll shut down gigabit zero 02 because that's the forwarding one. So if I do int gig zero 02 and shut this down, okay? So that will shut down and do a show spanning tree. We're in the listing stage, okay? For gigabit zero one. And this is going to take up to um, 30 seconds. We're in the learning stage. And this is what it's going to take to transit. In the case, however, let's do the same thing on switch three, but we'll configure it uplink first. Now it's just configured in global configuration mode and you can't configure um, uplink fast on a per VLAN basis. It's simply uh, it's the command as you see it right there. I'll just take off the caps lock there. Uplink fast. And that's us. That's all the command is. So basically what we're going to do is is in the case of like I say show span we have Gigabit 01, which is forwarding this link here. Gigabit 02 is blocking. But when I shut this one down, Gigabit 02, rather than going through listing and learning, Gigabit 02 is going to be forwarding. Okay, so let's just test that out. So in Gig 01, and we're going to shut that down. Uplink fast has come up. You see that? The thing there, show spanning tree. And we're actually forwarding already. So Gigabit 02 is immediately transitioned to forwarding. Okay, doc. So I'm trying to keep the videos a wee bit shorter this time, so I'm going to chop it here. That's the end of this video. The next one will be on Backbone Fast, and hopefully that was helpful. Thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.